So thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. So the title for this session is how an internet service provider use Splunk Enterprise Security to protect 24 million subscribers from 100 million attacks daily. Uh, kind of mouthful. But in short, uh, for next 20, 30 minutes, we're going to talk about uh, Splunk Enterprise, use, Enterprise Security use cases for the internet service provider, uh, Korean-based ISP, uh, which is called SK Broadband. So skip this. A little bit about ourselves. Hi. Hi, 안녕하십니까. <laughs> My name is Kyungun Lee, and I'm a security tech engineer at SK Broadband Network Security Team for the last 10 years. <coughs> I've been using Splunk last couple of the years, and it is my great pleasure to share out my Splunk journal with you. I'm a bit worried about uh, that my English is not good enough to transfer all thing I know to you. So if you have a question, feel free to ask me after the session. Thank you. Yeah, and my name is Sung Do Che, and I'm Splunk sales engineer based in Seoul, South Korea. Like you said, we are kind of excited to be a one and only Korean speaking here at DACOM. But at the same time, like Mr. Lee mentioned, we are kind of nervous because uh, English is not our mother tongue. So if you got uh, any question, ask in Korean or use less than 10 words <laughs> so we can understand, <laughs> understand you easily. Oh, that's good. Cool? All right. So let me start with the uh, non-technical stuff first. Oh, cool. <laughs> OK. So if you guys watch news recently, you know, you might know that the, the political atmosphere around the Korean Peninsula has been quite dramatically changes, right? So well, we are talking about peace, you know, after 70 years, you know, divide, divide right? But uh, the thing is that at uh, the same time last year, right after the poll, you know, we were, I mean, there was, we were, we thought like uh, there would be a war between North Korea and, you know, U.S. war, us. So the, the poll right after taken, you know, after you know, Mr. Trump's, you know, fire and fury threat, you know, to the North Korean, a lot of majority of American, you know, believe that the North Korean's nuclear program is kind of critical threat to the U.S. But the thing is, well, I got this from Jimmy Kimmel Live, and a lot of, you know, American doesn't even know where you know, Korea is. You know, some say it's in, you know, Brazil or whatever, you know. So, but, so we are in Asia, right? And uh, we are sitting right between Great China and Japan. So, so it, and it's kind of wrong way fly here. It takes like an 18, 19 hour from Korea to here. So if, I mean, even they shoot something over here, it's going to take a while. So, no worry, right? So, the, we are not, not only known as uh, you know, Kim Jong-un's nuclear stuff and kimchi or K-pop, you know, BTS stuff. We are kind of, we have, you know, fastest average internet speed over the world, right? We are like four times faster than world average. And you can get like a gigabit internet with a kind of reasonable price in anywhere in over the country. And we are soon to be launch 10G services as well, maybe early next year. And the SK Broadband here with SK Broadband here with us today is the, one of the leading you know top tier one ISP which make this you know world leading fastest, fastest internet possible. Uh, founded around 20 years ago, they have commercialized ADSL services back in 1999, which is first in the world. And as a leading ISP and media platform provider, they have various services, including broadband internet services, 
IPTV, telephony, and mobile IPTV services as well, and holding more than 20 million subscribers, which is you know, one third of a uh, whole South Korean population. So what's all this about in you know, security perspective? You know, you got Great China and North Korea as your neighbor, which is, you know, obviously you, they are well known, a lot of hackers, right? And we have fast internet, which is like a, having a highway to the wall. So it's kind of playground for everyone, right? So, you know, massive, and in a security point of view, massive, you know, traffic, internet traffic also mean massive attack as, as well. In SK broadband network, 220 petabytes of data is flowing on their network every day. And sometimes it go, goes up to 18 terabps in a peak time, which is huge, right? Kind of, it's kind of Splunk license though, but it's not. And that means, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's a lot of attacks, right guys? Sometimes it goes up like 1,000 DDoS attack daily, and that, in fact, like a 250 giga BPS, you know, in a peak time, which is huge. Uh, not only traffic, you know, traffic-wise, you know, attacks, there's a lot of, you know, attacks and uh, cyber, you know, threat every day, and for, due to the uh, vulnerability of your ICT devices. For instance, your PC, your home router, your AI speakers, or even smart TV or refrigerator, which is connected to the uh, internet directly, that can be, you know, easily turned into the zombie, you know, devices or infected malware and can be used at, like a malicious purposes, right? So, Mm -hmm. So with that, let me hand over to Mr. Lee and hear more technical stuff about their story. Thank you, Sungdo. Uh, I'm a full English, so I will show my notebook. I please appreciate my speak. Yeah. Uh, Network Security Center, uh, we operating there. And for the last few years, the scale of attacks we mentioned before is so rapidly growing. It, it has been beyond the scope of the single company standalone defense. As a very front line to control these attacks, we have built a network security operating center four years ago for a fast security response against massive attack. There is our operating center's pictures. There is topology of our service. We service internet data center, broadband internet, IPTV, mobile IPTV, VOIP, DNS service, all of this. And as I mentioned, we are facing a ton of threat and attack every day. To protect our customer from those attacks, we need to solve a lot of problem beforehand. Scalability. We need to be able to detect and respond to a massive amount of security events from hundreds of millions of routers, ICT device, and network device in real time. At the same time, we also have, the, also have to be flexible and fast enough to analyze unknown threat so SOC analysts can respond to security event as quick as possible. We need a platform for this problem. So to protect our broadband network from massive and complex attacks, we have built our own network security platform. As you can see on the bottom, on the bottom, we have a SK Broadband Security Platform Framework, hundreds of various network and security devices, including IDS, NGIPS, 
DNS, firewall, and many systems such as centralized threat intelligence, traffic metadata. We ingest these data in real time and store them in the problem a platform called Brain, which stands for Big Data Analysis in Network, we call that. It built on Splunk Enterprise 7.1 with Enterprise Security 5.1. Is there a problem? Yes. Make sure you guys not get sleep. <laughs> With the data from each security fr framework, we create notable events by correlations such as risk store analysis and machine learning. And then, SOC member review that notable event, make response by manually or automatically. We are also using adaptive response action for real-time action. We'll talk about detail of each letter in presentation. Data source, we are ingesting more than 6 billion events per day from security platform mentioned before. We are collecting many different type of logs, IDS, NGIPS, malware detecting system, web firewall, firewalls, whole network wide DNS query data, and NetFlow, SFlow, CFlow from call outer. We are also using Splunk Stream to ingest some threat protocol we define metadata coming from network packet broker such as Gigamon. To track down source of attack, we are collecting and updating around 13 million asset information, including our B2C customer DHCP assigned log, B2B log information every day. Uh, and for your reference, we have five such a node with such a head cluster and 60 index cluster. We operate it. And this, this paper page is a security posture of our, this is a security posture of our own SK broadband network security platform. Among the 6 billion events, there are over 600 million security events generating daily. And from them, we have uh, 20,000 notable events uh, populated after correlation analysis. Through this, we can see we are black blocking around 200 million security attacks daily. At first time, we are hesitated to use ES because ES, ES security domain out of box is not quite matching to us. But ES provide very flexible way to customize. We have implemented security domain which fit in our business. Even more than, we have transformed our team organizations into those domain centric so we can more easily measure and level each domain's performance and real time status of security threat. In Brain, we are heavily using Adaptive Response Framework for faster action on reviewed incident. We have designed a Polish-based response system, and with this, we are proactively depends review notable event. We can send it to IP null routing, IP black hole, IP and DNS sync hole, and HTTP URI reset based blocking. Send pop up notifications to customers' browser to warning the security issue. Or 
send, send information to call center or our network engineer so they can fix the issues. This is quite smaller, similar concept with Phantom, which we did not know when we designed this platform. Recently, we got a very impressive Phantom's automation and orchestrations architecture. So we are planning to using it in next phase. Swimlane are one of our favorite features in ES. We have a very many network issue. If, if we have an issue in networks, we need to quickly find out IP basis anomaly in each area. With 13 million customer set information and detailed customized information, we could save a lot of time and effort in analyzing correlation with security event and asset. Feature such as adaptive response and swim lane did increase operational efficiency over our SOC organization's daily work process a lot. It is our customized swim lane. Thread intelligence. In ES thread intelligence, we can use download thread info, but we need a bidirectional circular process. So, we integrate thread intelligence in Splunk ES into our own cyber thread intelligence to achieve this goal. We named this new thread intelligence management system as SKCTIS. Currently, we are feeding 1.8 million thread indicate to the other systems in this thread intelligence workflow with notable event in brain generating from security frameworks events, SOC analysts reviewed it and pass the indicate found from it to the SKCTIS. SKCTIS update indicator base, indicator base policy and threat to the each security framework such as IDS, NGIPS. And based on this, revised into security event collected info frame. With this bidirectional circular process, we could integrate, liberalize thread info as workflow. We could have our own thread intelligence asset and provide better security visibility to B2B customer. Now, we have uh, some problem applied to ES on ISP. Very important warning when you using ES in ISP. Is, is here working to ISP in here? No? Oh, good to see you. Um, one big difference between normally enterprise environment and ISP is size of IP address and thread. ISP is much, much bigger. So there could be a lot, <coughs> there could be a lot of technical issue with big and high cardinality IP address and DNS lookup creations. Especially thread gen and lookup gen that comes with ES out of box. We have faced many technical issues in such a cluster, such as replication problem and TCP socket broken, and found out that the reason we found were suppression CSV from thread gen and lookup gen. To solve this problem, we have modified custom thread and lookup gen at this picture. Changes operation list to KV store 
and reduce suppression frequency. Hope this tip can help you if you apply ES in ISP. This was big headache in first few months of our. And another our headache is, like I mentioned before, one of the big difference in ISP net worlds, there are much bigger and high cardinality IP address event. We use ISP name and ISP AS number in detecting attack in many correlation search rules. However, Splunk's out of box MMDB does not shift with AS number, ISP name, which is required to filter out. We, inter we initially try to build IP locations, custom command, or external lookup to enrich ASN, ISP name, but we had very many performance issues like uh, second IP locations or external DNS logos. So what we had done is that download MaxMine database and create custom build script to add and modifying exist MaxMine database column for adding context we want, such as ISP names, AS number, which this way could, could achieve high speed IP location query speed that we want. Summary, on our network security platform, it's been almost three years we launched Splunk Enterprise and 10 months after rolled out Splunk Enterprise security. So, after Splunk, we could collect more security event and previous ESM-based system, 100 to 6 billion event per day. Much more scalability than before. For investigation time for unknown security issue, we could do it much, much faster than before from three hours to five minutes in average. With this, we could process more security incident from 500 to 20,000 per day, depending more than 20, 100 million intrusions daily. In brief, in brief we, could our, we could do our jobs more scalability, more flexibility, with much more speedy manner, speedy manner, much high, higher productivity than ever before. We, so we are very happy. <laughs> yeah. Happy, I'm happy. <laughs> so, what's next for our Splunk journey? After great successfully, I think, landing Splunk as a core network security platform, we are planning more data into Splunk. We don't have any point data, because we are ISP. So we are ingesting to ingest data from endpoint such as our customers' home routers, low, B2B and B2C paid customers, PC and vaccine or virus, malware, low, we correct. In Korea, there is uh, some legal um, collecting ISP to B2C customers' information. We cannot collect that. So we have uh, some additional uh, product. So paid customer, we will protect him. We are also implementing machine learning based analytics using, using machine learning toolkit. 
we are in phase one of the implementations, machine learning based prediction scenario that can trigger the notable event as more accuracy in analysis. And automations and orchestration is another big topic, smart and pastor response security event. We are testing Phantom and integration with existing adaptive response framework we have. So, quick takeaway here. As we have covered, there are so many ways to customize Splunk ES. It's quite flexible to customizing and extendable for your business requirement, even for ISP like us. Second, adaptive response framework is one good way to reduce time to action, so use it. Last but least, you can use Splunk security in ISP world. I think maybe we should rebrand not a ES enterprise security as ISP security. Thank you. So is there any question in Korean? <laughs> or 10 more, less than 10 more? Make it 15 if you want. I was just curious. Um, I mean, you mentioned somewhat uh, that you had to sort of massage your KV stores and comps and what, because you're dealing with so much data. Yes. But I'm sure, like, can you share any of those, uh, some of the things that increased efficiency the most? Because I'm sure it would work for a lot of us at smaller organizations as well. Okay. Uh, quite more than 10 more, so. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Just. Oh, okay. 알려주세요. 아, 이해를 못 했으니까. 그, 뭐, 좀 더, 조금만 조직에서 이렇게 쉐어할 수 있는 어떤 지식 같은 거, 이런 것들, 되게 디테일한, 프랙티컬한 거. Uh, the thing is, we don't have it right now. Maybe right after session, we can you know, okay. have more discussion with you. Okay. Thank you. Let's see if this works. 공격이 잔치 또는 고객 잔치를 대상으로 합니다. 아. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand. Sorry. It's all right. I mean, you can, you can ask me in your English, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this time, uh, we, we have a very headache about the situation of the ICT device uh, using operating system BGBox. One of the busy bugs. Telet attacks. So, Hangumalu. The busy bugs that in IoT, Edri, the action code or hacking, they are coming there. So, network traffic is coming in. So, one of their biggest issue is uh, some IC, ICT devices has. Infected like a telet, you know, busy box, and it. Sorry, so, Korean was kind of long, so kind of forgot. Action code is transmitted in this case. Network traffic is transmitted. Ah, yeah. So in this case, in that case, infected DIC devices, there's a lot of traffic is, is you know, is occupied already. So it's is infecting the quality of the services as well. So that's one of their issues right now. Thank you. Is it no question? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time.